I'm Professor Gary Locklear. Welcome to my preliminary research results. I need an assistant to help me switch screens here. <laughs> There's a war raging around you, quite literally. It's autumn, 1635, and the war is surrounding you, and it's affected you your work, and your loved ones. In autumn 1635, it's the 30 year war that's wreaking havoc in Germany. Horribly, your wife and several children have died of the plague. In fear, you flee your house and hometown. But after prayer and contemplation, you return. Why? You believe God has called you to serve others with your scientific work, even in the midst of chaos and turmoil. This is the geographic scene in the country we now call Germany in the early 17th century. Wilhelm Schickard lived in that yellow area, Württemberg. Specifically, he was a pastor and a professor at the University of Tübingen there in Württemberg, Germany. My preliminary research, I refer to it with this title. Chicard's success, Walton Schaung Wirt, Donum Day. During the spring 2022 academic semester, I was granted a research sabbatical by Concordia University, Wisconsin. I had known about Wilhelm Schickard. I had come across him from time to time, but I was really hoping to do an in-depth investigation and research into this very important historic figure. Here was my research proposal. Wilhelm Schickard was a Lutheran pastor and professor at the University of Tübingen. His contribution to the development of computer science is very important, but not well known. I will research the life and times of Chicard with the intent of answering this question. How did Chicard's Lutheran Christian worldview contribute to his scientific and technological accomplishments? While I believe it did influence him, I intend to find evidence that it did or did not and determine specifically in what ways his worldview affected his work. This research would have a direct impact on my teaching and scholarship in computer science. Computer science is a discipline that solves problems for others. That is those outside of computer science. The worldview of the practitioner affects the solution to the problem and how that technology is used. Technology really isn't neutral. Today, technology can be purposely created for ethically good or morally bad purposes, demonstrating that the impetus for the origin of the computer was a Christian worldview would strengthen our teaching position that computer science is a vocation. My major goal in this research was to determine how Wilhelm Schickard's Lutheran worldview influenced him during the creation of the world's first mechanical calculator by uncovering some direct evidence supporting this thesis. I had a couple secondary goals also. First to first of the second. Secondary goal, determine how the worldviews of other pioneers influenced them. This would increase the credibility of the main goal if it can be shown others were similarly influenced by their Christian worldview. And finally, to determine the effect the Lutheran Reformation had on the development of technology. 
Personally, I have found this research to be extremely interesting and personally exciting. I've been so thankful to be engaged in this. And I want to publicly acknowledge and thank the following for, for, for providing my research sabbatical. Dr. Steve Montreal, the Dean of the School of Arts and Sciences. Dr. Leah Dvorak, the Interim Provost of Concordia University. Dr. Bill Curio, the Interim President of Concordia University. And the Concordia University Board of Regents. Being released from my normal teaching load allowed me to focus on the research project. In addition, I'm absolutely in debt to my colleagues in the computer science department who willingly taught extra courses in my absence. Professor Yiming Liao, Dr. Robert Wall, Dr. Josh Locklear, and Dr. Mike Littman. The department chair, Dr. Littman, also provided some funding to assist with the research project by purchasing a Caesar book scanner, some software, and several books. I absolutely need to mention my family and especially my wife, who was a great sounding board for my ideas. You know, it was uh, easy for me to get wrapped up in this research, and I thank them for their understanding and their willingness to put up with the fact that sometimes I was out doing other things. <laughs> the research methodology involved. This was a forensic research project as I am investigating historical origins. I am familiar with this type of science due to my research and teaching of cosmogony. Cosmogony is the science of origins and requires specialized investigative tools. Origin, or sometimes people call it forensic science, requires uncovering evidence and constructing logical models. On the other hand, operation or empirical science can do direct investigation via observation and experimentation. But that's not possible with a subject that is 400 years old. As a 17th century scientist, much of Chicard's works are in Latin. He, of course, also wrote in German. The major biographies of Chicard are written in German. Whew. At the beginning, I knew very little Latin. And by the way, even less German. <laughs> so I had to bone up. Oh, look at that handsome fellow. Here I am reviewing my Wheelock Latin. It was interesting. I was surprised to find out that here at Concordia, when Latin is talk, Wheelock is still used. Well, I have to admit that I am not a Latin expert, nor am I a German expert. I spent a lot of time working with this, and I'm sort of at the point where I can do some mechanical translations, but I will admit I'm still woefully inadequate in both German and Latin. I can pick out some things, I can read some things, but if you heard me read that German and Latin up front, you know. <laughs> I'm not an expert. I'm thankful that I have recently been able to recruit two students at Concordia University to help uh, with translation. Harrison Hulse will be helping me do some Latin translation, and Erica Christensen will be helping with German. Both of them came highly recommended, and I'm looking forward to having them help me out and really breathe some life into the stiff mechanical translations that I do. <clears throat> I was able to contact Dr. Friedrich Seck, uh, the world-renowned biographer of Wilhelm Schickard. In addition to the definitive biography and several anthologies of Schickard, Dr. Seck collected and translated hundreds of letters written by and to Wilhelm Schickard. He has this great book I need to share with you. Two huge volumes, about 1,500 pages of his letters. 
This was a great resource as I was digging into the person, the personality, and the worldview of Wilhelm Schickard. So I really appreciate his work. You know, it was very interesting to be able to uh, contact Dr. Seck. I'm not sure how old he is now, but he graciously responded to a number of my letters and he put up with my poor German along the way. His two volume set, Briefwasch, consisting of nearly 1500 pages, was really invaluable to my research. During this research, I have read thousands of pages of material, mostly in Latin and German. I have digitally captured much of that material, and that will enable me to review it and provide more accurate translations, especially of key sections. I mentioned that my colleague, Dr. Lippmann, uh, purchased for the department and I was able to use this CZUR scanner, C-Z-U-R. It's a book scanner, you notice it's flatbed, but it's designed to be able to deal with the curvature of a book. You know the problem if you put a book on a photocopier or just take a picture of it, <clears throat> it's curved. Well, this is able to compensate for the curvature involved. Using lasers, it measures the curve and then it compensates during the scanning process. It does, one of the things I like about the software that came bundled with this is it provides OCR, optical character recognition. Unfortunately, OCR is far from perfect. Now, while 95% accuracy sounds good, remember this deals with individual characters. If you had 1,500 characters on a page, then 75 of them are incorrect. Well, it's fairly easy to spot in English, but if you don't know the language well, like German or Latin, it's much harder. By the way, I'm often saddened that software developers don't work with their own software or interact with the users who do work with their software to get insight and feedback regarding their software. The software with, with, with this, bundled with this, was not good. And I did a number of tweaks and some specialized macros to try to get things to work better. User experience is a topic I emphasize with my own students. I was able to work around, again, some of these issues, but it was still too much of a manual process. While I'm thanking people, I need to acknowledge our librarians here at Concordia University, especially the chief librarian, Christian Hemsel, and one of the librarians, Carol Mitek. They were invaluable at locating resources, and Carol especially in finding hard copy volumes at faraway places and getting them via interlibrary loans. In addition to reading the letters of Wilhelm Schickard and biographies from him, I also consulted works related to his time and other scientists he knew, such as Johann Kepler and Johann Andrea. There's some very interesting works of both of those people. I, while I haven't read this book because it's in English, <laughs> Kepler's Tubigen, I know this is going to provide some great insights. I have read some Kepler. And this is Montgomery's biography of Andrea Cross and Crucible. So it's not just focused, my research is not just focused on Wilhelm Schickard, it's also focused on those around him and the general milieu of his times. After all, I need to understand the life and times of Wilhelm Schickard. There was a uh, huge, in my mind, research challenge. There are no accessible records of Wilhelm Schickard's theological works. None of his sermons or disputations or other theological focused works are readily available. 
this would have been extremely beneficial to me in my project, as you can imagine. Wilhelm Schickard was a Lutheran pastor and professor. While he served at the University of Tübingen, he also was a theologian steeped in the Lutheran tradition. Well, to understand his worldview, I really need to read some of his theological writings. Now, his biographers and Friedrich Seck especially were not interested in that. So they collected his letters that dealt with other aspects, but his sermons and theological works, those are still squirreled away in various libraries in Germany. And perhaps someday I'll be able to uh, visit there and see what might be happening. So big research challenge for me. I wanna know his worldview. His theological works would have been beneficial in this regards. Yet that also provided me with an opportunity. While I don't always have direct written confirmation of the specifics of his worldview in his own words, I can still answer the question by inferring much from his letters, his books, especially the introduction to his works, his scientific writings, and the ideas from his friends and acquaintances and the general milieu in which he lived and worked in. So as I'm very familiar with my work in cosmogony, inference to the best explanation, this is what will be guiding me here in the context of my research into Wilhelm Schickard. My research abstract. Please realize this is all preliminary, but I do wanna share with you what I believe to be the best possible abstract of my work right now. And then in a minute, the best possible introduction to my work. Wilhelm Schickard was a genius who was motivated by his Lutheran worldview to investigate God's creation for the benefit of others. As a scientist, he studied God's designs in the heavens, he was an astronomer, and on earth in languages, and he knew a dozen well. As a technologist, he produced tools that assisted people in both acquiring knowledge and in applying that knowledge in their profession. Chicard was an ambidextrous philosopher who employed his mind and his spirit as an integrated whole in his manifold scientific and technological pursuits. He deeply desired to know how God accomplished his creative works and mimic God as a sub-creator in his own vocations. Science and theology were integrated in his worldview and led him to unprecedented accomplishments. In his short life, Chicard mastered numerous languages, <clears throat> served as a parish pastor, taught Hebrew, mathematics, and astronomy at the University of Tübingen. He developed tools to learn languages. He produced theological commentaries. He investigated the solar system. He described comets. He surveyed the land. He produced maps. He created artistic engravings. He developed mathematical models and he invented the world's first mechanical calculator. As a Lutheran pastor, he was filled with the spirit of God as he contemplated theology and how it applied to all arenas. As a Lutheran professor, his mind and reason produced practical works for the enrichment of life lived under the grace of God. For Chicard, living as a Lutheran did not mean being separate from the world and withdrawing from it. Instead, the Christian life meant engagement with the world. Good works were not cloistered activities of self-piety, 
but were meant for others as faith bearing fruit in acts of love. Shikard's success flowed from a Weltanschauung Wert worldview effect as a Donum Dei, gift of God. Let me read to you from my introduction. I will likely skip all the footnotes and related ancillary materials, but it's documented. Wilhelm Schickard created the world's first mechanical calculator in 1623. This calculating clock or arithmetic organ could automatically add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Unlike any previous device or technique, the operator needed no knowledge of mathematics to work it. Numbers were dialed into the machine and it was cranked by hand to produce the desired result. With this machine, anyone could perform the four basic arithmetic operations effortlessly. Why was Chicard the first to create a mechanical calculator? What influenced him to create this device among many other inventions? The motivation was his Lutheran Christian worldview. As a Lutheran pastor and professor at the University of Tübingen, Wilhelm Chicard was immersed in his worldview. It guided and directed his research, investigation, experimentation, and inventing. Chicard's life embodied these words from Paul in Romans 8. For those who live according to the flesh set their mind on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit set their minds on the things of the spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. The integration of all things in the person of Christ is essential to a Lutheran worldview. The Apostle Paul wrote, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in this, the beloved. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the, fulfill, for the fullness of time, to unite all things in him, to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. Chicard labored to unite things, all things, things in heaven and things on earth through Christ. The phrase things in heaven refers to mathematics and abstract concepts embodied in language. The phrase things on earth refers to practical applications and real tools used for the benefit of others. The real presence of Christ on earth and in heaven was an inspiration for Wilhelm Schickard. Schickard's Lutheran worldview infused him with an energetic sense of vocation. Vocation is using one's skills and abilities to love and serve society that is, neighbors. Rather than investigating science for its own sake, Wilhelm Schickard wanted to use science as a tool to aid others in their work. The Apostle Paul wrote, Owe no one anything except to love each other, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Chicard's calculating machine is a superb example 
of how he wanted to help colleagues advance their work by removing the tedium and drudgery of manual calculation. Astronomers such as Wilhelm Schickard and his friend Johannes Kepler labored mightily with manual calculations in order to demonstrate the validity of their astronomical theories. These calculations required a high level of precision. As you can imagine, multiplying and dividing 12 digit values was tedious and error prone. In the early 17th century, John Napier discovered and published his work on logarithms. By the use of tables, multiplication and division could be reduced to addition and subtraction. While this simplified the process, it was still error prone as values had to be referenced in tables. The tables could be accurate and the manual calculations of addition and subtraction was still required. While both Chicard and Kepler knew of logarithms, it's uncertain whether they use them to any extent in their calculations. In spite of the benefit logarithms would provide, even with their effectiveness, Wilhelm Schickard wanted something even easier and better. Schickard experienced the weakness inherent in manual calculations on a daily basis. He also knew his friend and fellow astronomer Kepler struggled with the myriad of calculations necessary for supporting his heliocentric model of the solar system. For two decades, Johannes Kepler labeled and producing the Rudolphin tables, which could be used to predict the location of the planets and locate stars based upon the date and time. In response to a quest for his yet incomplete tables, Kepler wrote, I beseech you, my friends, do not sentence me entirely to the treadmill of mathematical computations and leave me time for philosophical speculations which are my only delight. Could the computational processes be mechanized? Chicard wondered. With, with his friend Kepler, he echoed the plea to be released from the hard labor of computation. Wilhelm Chicard would rather spend his time in philosophical speculations, that is, investigating and contemplating God's creation. The mathematical computations were important to demonstrate the validity of his theories, but Chicard reasoned there had to be a more productive way of carrying them out. Wilhelm Chicard was at the forefront of a scientific revolution in mechanization. The, science, the 17th century is characterized by efforts to mechanize all areas of life. We would call this idea of mechanation, mechanization yeah, we would, we would refer to mechanization as automation today. His calculating machine was just one of many tools he created to simplify tasks via automation. Why should a person labor to produce the task when a machine can perform the task automatically? Wilhelm Schickard created the calculating machine as a means to reduce the toil of manual computation. Schickard wrote to Kepler and noted, I have recently tried mechanically the same thing you have done mathematically. And by mathematically, he means manually. And I have constructed a machine. The calculating machine was just what both he and Kepler needed to avoid the treadmill of mathematical computations and the hard labor of manual computation. An automated method of computation would increase the accuracy of the computations by reducing human error. The mechanical focus on abstraction, the mechanical, excuse me, the mechanical calculator would increase the researcher's productivity as it allowed more time to focus on the abstract philosophical aspects of the work. The mechanical calculator was a tool that would demonstrate love to his neighbor by serving them in a specific meaningful way. It is clear that Chicard did not create the calculating machine to win praise, earn a fortune, or solidify his status as a genius for posterity. Instead, his love and concern for others was his primary concern. 
Centuries later, Einstein would say this, it is not enough that you should understand about applied science in order that your work may increase man's blessing. Concern for the man himself and his fate must always form the chief interest of all technical endeavors. Ed Veith wrote, what does it mean to live out faith in one's calling? The Bible is clear. Only faith working through love. The aim of our charge is love that issues from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. Here we come to the ethical implications of vocation and to the relationship between good works and justification by faith. According to the Reformation doctrine of vocation, the purpose of every vocation is to love and serve our neighbors. You would have laughed out loud, Wilhelm Schickard wrote to Johann Kepler about the operation of the calculator. Apparently the working machine was quite a sight while it was operating. The intricate gears, levers, and slots all worked together harmoniously albeit noisily, to produce the desired effect. Interestingly, the calculator was Trinitarian in nature. There were three identifiable components which all worked together in harmony. The central section performed addition and subtraction. An upper section handled multiplication and division in conjunction with the central section. The final section was the memory for results. Chicard wrote this. What you have done by calculation, that is manually, I have just tried to do by way of mechanics. I have conceived a machine consisting of 11 complete and six incomplete sprocket wheels. It calculates instantaneously and automatically from given numbers as it adds, subtracts, multiplies, and divides. You would enjoy to see how the machine accumulates and transports spontaneously at 10 or 100 to the left and vice versa, how it does the opposite if it is subtracting. Two centuries later, Charles Babbage's calculators would separate computation, what Babbage called the mill, from memory, what Babbage called the store, just as Chicard had done here in the early 17th century. Chicard did not consider his calculator special or deserving of honor. After designing and creating it in 1623, he didn't mention it in writing again, and he moved on to his many other pursuits. Two calculators produced by a local clockmaker based upon Wilhelm Chicard's detailed design. Tragically, both were destroyed in fires. The one intended for Johannes Kepler was burned before it can be completed and delivered. Although Chicard's work on the calculator was referenced and published since the 17th century, it was not and is not widely known. His mon monumental contribution to computer science was rediscovered in the 20th century by a bi biographer of Johannes Kepler, who found Chicard's letters to Kepler's note, found, found Chicard's letters buried in Kepler's notebooks. Still today, many assume the brilliant Christian philosopher Blaise Pascal was the first person to create a mechanical calculator. His device, the Pascaline, was produced in numbers and several examples survive to this day. Pascal had no knowledge of Chicard's work and his device was a marvel. However, Chicard's device surpassed the capabilities of Pascal's machine and was completed two decades earlier. Wilhelm Schickard is deserving of the title creator of the calculator. Yet the calculator was not an idol for Schickard. It was beneficial only in its application and use by others. Wilhelm Schickard would deflect any praise intended to him and instead point to Christ. Schickard was a sub-creator using the gifts of the creator to enrich the lives of others. Because, <clears throat> however, because I believe it is God's destiny, he wrote, because I have not asked for it myself, I will continue to trust him. 
Wilhelm Schickard saw the beauty and harmony of science and religion. Theology was the queen of the sciences and mathematics was the princess over all other scientific endeavors. Schickard was both a theologian and a scientist. He saw no disconnect between the two. Instead, he saw integration and compatibility. Wilhelm Schickard knew that mathematics was a creation of God and given to human beings as a gift. Mathematics was not a human invention as the Greeks thought, but instead was discovered by humans infused with a sense of wonder about the creator God. Chicard agreed with Plato that mathematics had a divine origin, but differed from Plato in knowing that mathematics originated with the triune God who revealed himself in the Bible. For Wilhelm Schickard, science was a deeply theological project as he studied the works of God. Because of his Lutheran worldview, Schickard believed science was possible and constituted an honorable vocation. Modern science is based upon several Christian worldview concepts. These key presuppositions include a creation which is intelligible, orderly, and contingent. Without these assumptions, science would be impossible. Chicard's Lutheran worldview provided these conceptual foundations and propelled his scientific investigations. The creation is the product of a mind and can be understood by the mind of his creatures because human beings are created in the image of God. The order expressed in the laws of nature were the result of divine governance. The creation is contingent upon God's reason and not human logic. To understand the creation, scientists must empirically investigate nature. Which way did God create the universe? Is the solar system geocentric or heliocentric? Are the planetary orbits circular or elliptical? It therefore follows that scientists have to investigate and analytically determine how God actually did it. Wilhelm Schickard's friend and colleague Johann Johannes Kepler wrote, I am merely thinking God's thoughts after him. Since we astronomers are priests of the highest God in regard to the book of nature, it benefits us to be thoughtful, not of the glory of our minds, but rather above all else of the glory of God. Shikard knew that God revealed himself in his word to his creation. Chicard knew that in order to automate a process, an algorithm is required. A <laughs> calculator without automation was hardly beneficial. This idea flows directly from his Lutheran worldview concept of an orderly creation. As an astronomer, Wilhelm Chicard understood the concept of algorithms directing the heavenly spheres. Applying algorithms to earthly pursuits was a natural extension. Shikard saw that God employed algorithms in the context of natural law. And as a sub-creator, he too could employ algorithms within his calculator. Investigating natural laws is the fundamental business of science. Knowing the natural laws and algorithms allows a scientist to control and predict events. Investigating and understanding algorithms is central to the development of technology. An algorithm is a detailed, effective, and unambiguous set of step-by-step -step procedures for solving a problem. The concept of natural law had its genesis in a Christian worldview. In a Lutheran worldview, God is the divine lawgiver. Law refers both to the moral laws as expressed in the commandments and to the limits placed upon the creation by the creator. Job makes this plain when he says, God understands the way to it, and he knows its place, for he looks at the ends of the earth and sees everything under the heavens. When he gave the wind its weight and apportioned the waters by measure, when he made a decree for the rain and a way for the lightning, 
for the lightning of the thunder. Then he saw it and declared it. He established it and searched it out. And he said to man, behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to turn away from evil is understanding. The word translated there decree in verse 26, where God says he made a decree, is understood as limit, statute, or law. Intelligence, creativity, and insight are needed to create algorithms. Intelligence and creativity exist in humans as gifts from the creator. Human intellect and insight are required in the creation of algorithms since algorithmic design process is not mechanical. In other words, there is no algorithm that can be used to construct other algorithms. But it is the spirit in man, the breath of the Almighty, that makes him understand, Job declared. God created the algorithms of the universe. Humans are created in God's image. Therefore, we can and should create algorithms in our vocation. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Shikard knew that the basis for his vocation as a scientist was being made in God's image. Because of God's image, we have a degree of his characteristics, including intelligence, creativity, knowledge, rationality, memory, and senses, among others. These characteristics are tarnished because of sin and we have lost the perfect understanding of holiness, strictly we're talking about image and what theologians would call a wider sense here. Yet because God is creative, humans can be creative in their endeavors. Although tarnished by sin, image means we have a connection to the creator. Ultimately, our image looks like Christ as we are connected to the creator via Christ. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, Paul says in Romans. Living our vocation means we use our gifts of intelligence and creativity and service to others because of the intimate connection we have to Christ and how he integrates all things. Wilhelm Schickard's worldview infused him with the image of God, and he could echo these words, for in him we live and move and have our being. As even some of your own poets have said, we are indeed his offspring, Acts 17. Algorithmic concepts are revealed in the Bible. First Corinthians 14 states, but all things should be done decently and in order. The precise ordering of algorithms is, a crucial, is crucial to their efficacy. While an algorithm is an orderly rule, it is more than that. You then be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. An athlete is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. Think over what I say, for the Lord will give you understanding in everything. 2 Timothy 2. Algorithms must be detailed, effective, and unambiguous. You must make it according to all that I show you the patterns of the tabernacle, as well as the patterns of its furnishings. God says in Exodus 25, the book of Exodus shows that God is a God of details. While some quote the devil's in the details, the original German proverb is, der Liebe Gott steckt im Detail, which translates as God is in the details. That God is in the details is obvious from Scripture. Consider, all this David said I have in writing as a result of the Lord's hand on me, and he enabled me to understand all the details of the plan, 1 Chronicles 28. In a letter to Wilhelm Schickard, Johannes Kepler acknowledges the details of the Creator. Science is thinking God's thoughts after him. Let us therefore imitate God, who since he wished both the infinitiveness, the infiniteness, is that a word? Of the fixed things expressed in that immense sphere. An algorithm must be crystal clear, that is, unambiguous. 
also the Levites helped the people to understand the law. While the people remained in their place, they read from the book, from the law of God, clearly. And they gave them the sense so that people understood the reading, Nehemiah 8. First Chronicles 28 puts it as, All this he made clear to me in writing from the hand of the Lord, all the work to be done according to the plan. Wilhelm Schickard is the intellectual father of computer science. He considered what are today the grand ideas of computer science, including algorithms, abstraction, and automation, in the context of designing and building his calculator. His work was, quote, on behalf of the greatest and highest triune God, end quote. God created the universe to be discoverable, and Shakar's worldview motivated him to discover God's gift of algorithmic calculation. His Lutheran worldview was a catalyst for the development of the calculator. He serves as a role model and inspiration for all who endeavor to investigate the problem solving, who investigate problem solving, and produce technological tools for the betterment of humanity. So, what is next in my research? Let me share some directions that I hope to go next in my research with you. I will spend more time in focused reading and rereading of the letters of Wilhelm Schickard. And I will spend time investigating the other founders of both the Reformation and modern science of the 16th and century, 17th century. More reading, but it is fascinating. You know, Wilhelm Schickard is not well known in the United States, but he is well known in Europe and especially Germany. Here's a postage stamp issued in honor of the 350th anniversary of the invention of his calculating machine. Chicard is a symbol of national pride for his scientific and technological endeavors in Germany. Sadly, and I read this in many of his biographers, uh, they weren't interested or didn't pick up on or really relegated his theological impetus, his worldview, as just secondary. There's another very interesting aspect of Wilhelm Schickard. This was the portrait that he had commissioned, and he holds in his hand, and there's some other items around him, what he considered some very important aspects of his life. What's missing from this is his calculator. As a computer scientist, and what most people today would consider his greatest contribution was his calculator. But for Chicard, his greatest contribution was loving and serving his neighbor. There's another really interesting task. Professor Yi Ming and myself are working on a 3D printed model of Wilhelm Chicard's calculator. This is going to be a really cool project. Years ago, uh, S-118A within the computer science department served as a combination computer science lab and museum. I would love to create a series of displays regarding Wilhelm Schickard, including this model of his calculator, to share with the campus community. That room would be an ideal place within the computer science department. And next year, 2023, the 400th anniversary, would be a great time to do it also. So what's the end of the story? The early death of Wilhelm Schickard, he died before he was 45, sounds tragic to some. Why would God allow this, this brilliant promising mind? Why would God, where was God in the midst of all this suffering? Where was God? The same place he was when his son 
was suffering, the same place he always is, right there with us. Where is God in the midst of all this suffering? Exactly where he was when he allowed his son to suffer for us. Wilhelm Schakar did not consider death tragic. Instead, he could say with St. Paul, for I'm already being poured out as a drink offering and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Thank you so much for your rapt attention. I'm looking forward to updating you in the fall.